Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Going to take you along our adventures on this summer day. So if you like these day in the life videos, then give this one a thumbs up and let's hang out. Got my uh, workout in earlier today and now I'm just fixing myself up a protein smoothie so that we can get started. I got lots that I'm trying to get done this morning and so want to get going right away. It's nice to enjoy some slower summer days. We have three more weeks before we're gonna get back to our homeschool routine. And so just soaking up these early mornings, getting in some extra work that I wouldn't normally have time to do. If you're new to my channel, my name is Hannah and I am a stay-at-home homeschool mom of four little ones. And on this channel, I empower mamas in a healthy lifestyle for their hearts habits and home all about creating intentional rhythms for our homeschool for our homemaking and also for just natural living in general so if you're here new welcome and i hope that you enjoy this video and want to stick around to get to know our family a little bit more in this youtube world <laughs> so it's important to always remember to use proper equipment with, uh, <laughs> proper safety handle and then a guard and then you always want to wear gloves and eyeglasses <laughs> right all right so he is cutting these fencing for two trellises for the cucumber plants. So we're just gonna show you how we're gonna do that. They're already kind of taking over this garden, so I need to like get them on something very soon. So um, that is what we're doing here. And these tomatoes, I'm probably gonna cut back a little bit today. I went through and like cut out the bottoms but I think that I could even take it in more. Get a few tomatoes there, just starting. Yeah, all right. So you cut it to five feet, right? Uh, it's, just, it's just long enough to fit right in the uh, box. The box. So it fits right on the inside. Probably need, the, need my help for this, huh? I think when you're doing it as a fence, you would put the smaller holes on the yeah. The bigger fruit's gonna be on the bottom. Is it gonna push in or you gotta get the stakes? No, I get the stakes. I just wanna see, make sure it's Yeah. That's about right. Yep. I'm really excited how these turned out. Got these on clearance and even though our cucumber plants are sparse thanks to the earrig infestation um, i think that these are going to work really well for them to trellis up so that they will not take over these boxes of other vegetables that are trying to grow and make you know room for them i definitely tried to hammer this in myself but yeah you know, crooked <laughs> crooked it is my husband actually broke his wrist about six or seven weeks ago. And so the majority of this garden and projects, I had to do it myself. Um, and then my mom and dad helped quite a bit too. And even when we were doing this project, it still hurt. Uh, but I could not manage that sledgehammer. I was just too short or something. So he ended up doing it and that's fine. He was fine. It's just, he's still, it's still pretty tender. He has a hard time doing this kind of work. First year garden, so I'll just be excited with whatever produce we do get. And then, you know, next year, maybe try some things different and expand a little bit. Um, cut down to five feet, right? It was like five feet because the boxes are six feet. And then the stakes. Um, and then he just zip tied those on. So I'm going to get my twine. And if you guys remember from my last video, the garden update, we had earwigs. 
So a lot of the cucumbers didn't survive, but it looks like we might still get like some later summer, fall crop. So I'm gonna take some twine and I'm going to put these up on the twine. Yeah, we were putting the chickens to eat all the, eat all the bugs, but all right. So before we have lunch and get cleaned up, um, my little Mr. Michael man here, we're gonna give you an updated tour of uh, how the garden's going. So pretty sure I shared about the earwigs that we were dealing with at the beginning of June, which decimated a lot of our seedlings and baby plants. But despite the earwigs, we are getting a, our garden is really growing, isn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah, it's getting pretty big, so. I think we're gonna get some stuff despite those nasty pests. So I'm gonna walk you through it and give you guys a little update of uh, how things are going in our little urban city garden here. Come on, let's go show. All right, so what we got over here. These cherry tomatoes are getting really big, actually. And then those cherry tomatoes we planted later. So they were like cutoffs from the other ones. So we'll see how those do. We got, um, I actually didn't think I was gonna get any peppers because we had this cold front that came through and honestly just did not think any of them were gonna make it. But I think we actually might get some peppers. What? Do you see something? A bee? Oh, bees are good. We want bees in the garden. Why? Uh, because they pollinate the flowers, and the flowers are what's going to give us vegetables. Oh, they, they yeah, so like this yeah, one over here. Ones yeah, but this one over here. See these flowers? See these little flowers the bees are going to get? These little flowers are going to turn into peas. It's a beans. It's a bees. So the bees come in the flower, and then they pollinate it, and then it'll turn into a vegetable. Oh. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Yeah. So bees are really, really good. So these are different peppers. I don't remember. I have them staked in, but mixed. They're super bad when they sting. They do sometimes hurt if they sting. So these are a couple more peppers. I don't know how they're gonna do. Here's so this is how I kind of twined that trellis we put in this morning um this pepper is pretty big so i had tried attempted broccoli but this broccoli was one of the ones that got really eaten a lot by the earwigs so i don't know i'm just kind of leaving it there as either a sacrificial plant or as an experiment this one i need to just pull so because i lost so many peppers and broccoli from the earwigs i planted some bush beans here and i probably will do the same thing here is just plant two more bush beans um, and these cucumbers, like these have been planted so many times, but I think that these ones are going to make it and some of them I had transplanted. So hopefully in a two weeks or so they'll be growing up as well. And then same, the broccoli, this is just kind of an experiment at this point because I don't know if it's actually gonna, it'll grow. We'll see. We'll see. The handle of my bike is chewed up. Okay. We'll have to talk to Max about that. So here's how I tied these ones up you can see um, these cucumbers on the back so as they're growing I'm just gonna attempt attempt trellising those so that should be fun I have thinned these out quite a bit uh, these tomatoes but I'm probably gonna go through here and see there's still suckers growing down below there's two so I see two of them. yeah I know right yep yeah. these ones are the Roma Yep, got a couple there. So these, we got five in here. So I probably, that may have been too many. Then we got four of these ones. And these are like a big, bigger tomato, but there's a couple. So like you can see how I kind of thinned it out, but I think I'm gonna go through, take some more branches off there. And then these were the snap piece. 
this was stuff that didn't come up because of the earwigs. Um, so I don't know. I haven't decided if I'm going to try to just plant some more bush beans. But these are the pole beans, which are growing really well. And then these are some bush beans, which we'll probably get a harvest first, Lord willing. Um, and then over here, because the flowers, this one's, that, that one needs to get pulled. I had transplanted that. Um, these are more tomatoes that I got from a friend. Um, actually, this one I think was a branch that I took off from one of these plants. And then these are the flowers that are left that did not get eaten. So things are looking pretty good. I'm very happy with this first year of this garden. Got things I'll do differently next year. But, um, yeah. See what happens over the next two, three months. All right, let's go show them the... Go show them the backyard. Hmm? Yeah? All right, so we had this old chicken wire around this before to protect it from the dog from running through. We used the leftover um, cattle gate, whatever that it's called, um, in here. And I see some people online that trellis their zucchini. I didn't do that this year. I might next year with, like, a stake. But what I did do is try to, like kind of tie it up to see if it'll grow a little bit upwards just so it's easier honestly to get some of the fruit um so I did the same thing with this one here I just kind of like tied it up to keep it off the ground but it looks like I'm actually getting uh some zucchini some squash that was squash the zucchini I planted a little later so there's no uh no fruit yet but so that's what I did here same thing over here this is uh two watermelons and a pumpkin so um we'll see uh what happens here these ones kind of get some shade too so i don't know if they're getting enough sun but that's what we got going on in the back all right you know it's summer when it's one o'clock and you have just now showered for the day <laughs> so anyways we went to the beach yesterday and you guys gotta see this i got a little too much sun just you know chatting uh for like five hours and so <sighs> Anyways, um, I was going to share with you guys what I'm going to put all over my sunblock, my sunburn, uh, because this is like one of my absolute favorite things. It is called Lavender, and it has lavender, helichrysum, um, aloe vera, and peppermint, super soothing. I've been using this for years. This is a Young Living product, and it is also good for like burns, cuts, scrapes, but it is magic when it comes to sunburn. I put it all over my face last night and my older daughter who also got a little too much sun and I'm just going to put it all over um, my chest and shoulder area here. My sunburn will be gone in like a day or two and it will not peel. This stuff is like by far the best. Yeah, just, so you can kind of see exactly what that looks like. Um, of course, all the Young Living products have no parabens or phthalates or any synthetic, you know, fragrances um, and so super effective natural care right here so we're gonna take care of myself right now <laughs> oh i know um, if your kids are not seeing peaches, 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 well, I don't know uh, what to tell you, but that is like the most popular song. Anyway, so I'm going to make some lunch. And everybody's enjoying a snack. Peanut butter bananas with extra chocolatey, chocolatey chips is on the menu. And we came home from violin lessons to some Happy Mail from thrift books here so I'm just gonna open these up and show you guys since we're doing a day in life what we got in the mail Dada. Dada. okay first book we got here Dada. okay this is another one I've been slowly Dada. collecting these either from thrift books for Dada. free or at thrift stores this is the Redwall series by Brian Jock so this one as this one is uh, Matt Mio. <laughs> You need to get out, buddy? So you want a drink? You want a drink? You want a drink? I want a drink. So anyway, 
This is a great series. Let me know if you read these as a kid. I read out, I think there's like 20, 25 of them, and I read these out loud to my little brother. So these are great, great books. Oh, it's another Brian Jack book. I actually already own um, the second one to these. I think I did own this when I was in high school, but somehow got misplaced. Either maybe I loaned it to somebody or I lost it when I moved and got married. I don't know. But this is The Castaways of the Flying Dutchman. This series is also very, very good. This is one of three books. And so I'm looking forward to also either reading these out loud to the kids or Adelaide is old enough to read these both of these series. And they're just excellent, excellent literature. Love them so much. These other two books are for school. So we got... Um, oh, I'm sorry. One of these is for me, actually. Uh, this is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. So I'm reading this one for a book club. And I've never read this book. So I'm looking forward to this. I don't know if you've read any of his books. I'd love to know that. And then this one is for Adelaide. But I think we're going to just read it out loud as a family. We, I think I shared this before, but we really enjoyed the princess and the goblin and then what was the second one called um curdy and curdy and the princess right the those princess were so Curdy. yeah we really liked both of those books they're just so so entertaining so this one is also by george mcdonald and it's called the light princess and so i thought man we would really enjoy this one too so Anyways, always a good day when you get some happy mail. So here making dinner. We are having spaghetti tonight, making it just some ground turkey. And I really like against all grains, easy tomato sauce recipe. I don't know if I've shared this one before, but makes a really yummy spaghetti and salad. So we're having that tonight, but I wanted to share with you guys two recent reads. Um, I've been toying with the idea of sharing all the books that I read and kind of like doing book review videos. So let me know if you enjoy watching those type of videos in the comments so I can kind of just gather some feedback of other things that you might be interested in checking out. Um, but I typically read two to three books every single month. I'm part of a few book clubs and I'm also working through uh, some nonfiction for like homeschool and different things and then gobbling up fiction. And if you've ever struggled with like reading again as a mom, I will tell you for at least five or six years of my life, I felt like I was burned out of books. I don't know if that was from college or what it really was, but just kind of got burned out and <laughs> turn that off. And, um, anyways, joining some virtual book clubs and in-person book clubs has really helped me stay accountable. And then my desire to read, I feel like just came back, just came back. So anyways, I'm going to share with you two recent books that I feel like have really helped me and inspired me. And maybe you might want to check these out as well. But this one is in vital harmony. And my best way to describe this book is it's Charlotte Mason for dummies. <laughs> if you do not have the time, um, but you still desire to really understand the Charlotte Mason principles, her six volumes obviously take a little work to get through. Um, I've only read the philosophy of education and I am now working through home education this summer. They're dense. They're pretty dense books. Amazing. But this one I read with the book club over the past year and we, we read like three chapters every month. It was so invaluable. I feel like it gives you a really good idea of the philosophy of Charlotte Mason, but uh, Karen Glass breaks it down in very <sighs> chewable ways. So highly recommend this book. Um, I will link it down below for you. But this is In Vital Harmony by Karen Glass. Forward is by Cindy Rollins, two wonderful lady, ladies that I look up to in my homeschool journey. Okay, and this one I actually just finished last week. This is by Leo Tolstoy, and it's The Death of Ivan Illich, which I think I'm pronouncing that right. This one specifically has a forward by Ronald Blythe. <sighs> this book was so heavy. Um, a really easy read 
like a short, it's a novel, novelette or whatever, but. Okay. No, she's awake. Yeah. Um, so the best way I can explain it in a short synopsis, first of all, I have never read any Russian novel. This is my first Russian author. So if you're new to that, I was new to that. So these are, you know, not English, <laughs> native English. Um, but I've also never, you know, read Tolstoy and he wrote War and Peace, which I guess is a really big book. And maybe I'll try and tackle that one eventually. But this one is his kind of like idea and story about a man that dies and coming to grips of like the purpose of life like the point of life like why we work why we raise our family you know what happens he doesn't really contemplate what happens after death but just like what was the purpose of life and there was a quote in it that really just blew my mind and it was basically like all the work of this man like all his work everything he did was for pride and that just like struck me and I have Everybody that I've talked to for like the last week, I keep bringing up this book. Every conversation that I have with people, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I read this book by Robert Tolstoy. And it's, or, um, uh, hold on a second, Michael. So, uh, and then the, anyway, the rest of the quote is, all his work was for pride and then all his pleasure was for vanity. And that is it. And the whole 70 pages is him just coming to grips with um, what is the point of life? And I'm not going to be the ending in like, it's, it's a redemptive story, but um, man, that has got me like really just thinking about everything. It makes me want to read like Ecclesiastes again. Um, and anyway, so I just thought it would be fun to share with you guys those two books that I've read and maybe you can share with me something that you've been reading recently. Um, I'll tell you, I did not get to the kitchen decluttering that I thought I'd get to today. By the time we get home from violin, it was just like one thing after the another. And I've noticed that, I don't know if this is the same for you, but with a one-year-old, it is really hard to do any sort of decluttering type task in the afternoon. He's just busy and he's more needy. And then I feel like it's dinner time. And then of course, at that point, I'm just like, all right. <laughs> However, um, that's okay. So we'll get it, get, get to it on another day. Um, but my husband did finish the gate to my garden. So I officially have a gate and maybe I can get a clip of that here. Um, after I finish making dinner. So I'll check back in with you guys in a little bit. Mm -hmm, yummy, yummy. So bonds and noodles for mommy, regular whole wheat. Yummy noodles for the kids. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> well, that'll keep the dog out. It'll keep the dog out. So. And David. And David. <laughs> yeah. Nice job, babe. So just push down. Yeah, the post is a little off, no, so, but the gate's square. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to end today's vlog. I'm going to spray my plants down with some neem oil stuff that I made just because we're still dealing with different bugs. There are still a ton of earwigs, which is crazy. But also something else was getting <laughs> something else was also getting the um, uh, watermelon leaves, so I'm gonna just take a quick work of that. But wanted to uh, just this is like my new favorite Are thing you? now is evening garden looking. <laughs> I have a tomato question. Tomato question. Okay, Can go for it. Do the tomatoes get big enough? Are the earwigs going to be crawling through our tomatoes? No. I, no, I do not think so. They just Wait. like to eat the leaves. Press hopefully. Eat. Hopefully. So I'm going to end this vlog now, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.